Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for episode number 36 of our West Ham United career mode here on FIFA 15 and in today's episode we are firmly in the January transfer window playing two games because of that, uh, both actually in the cup, one an FA Cup tie against Reading and then a, the first leg of a Capital One Cup semi-final against Liverpool. Now of course in the last episode we made hard work of beating Watford 2-1, we then drew against QPR and beat Norwich as we entered the January transfer window and it's become apparent that we're going to get a lot of uh, offers for our Ecuadorian striker and Valencia, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. Now it's time to have a look at a squad report. Squad report I haven't brought you for some time. Willem's up one there, and uh, Umtiti up one, two. Delph actually up three now to 78. Morrison's staying the same. Vinaldum up two to 80. Downing one, uh, down one even there to 75. Are you staying the same at 80? Zarate staying the same also at 77 despite fluctuations in his attributes. Uh, and Valencia staying at 74. Rekic up one to 74. They're a 21 year old centre back. Monker up. Uh, 1 to 65. Danny Ings staying at 73. Diafra Sacco staying at 71. Aaron Cresswell up 1 uh, to 73 after a large increase on technical stats. Then we've got Matt Jarvis. Brill Donald and Bolo up 2 to 71. Diego Poye there still staying, uh, staying at 63. Palmer Brown up 2 to 67. Daniel Potts, uh, our young left back there at 63. Jekyll Koyate up 1 to 74. Uh, then we've got Yusuf Yaskalainen staying the same at 71. Uh, up 1 for Alan Traore. He's now at 74. Lattice Jenner up 2 despite his age to 79. Mark Noble staying at 75 and then we've got all the lone players there. Elliot Lee, Leo Chambers, Reese Burke all up to then Paul McCallum and Janai Gordon up to as well. But now it is time to get into the first game of this episode. The first two games against Reading in the FA Cup. I do believe this is a fourth round tie in the FA Cup. Now we played Reading last year. I think it may have actually been in the Capital One Cup and we made things fairly easy for ourselves actually we played well and we ended up taking the win 4-1 so we'll be looking for a similar performance today and we'll have a look at the squad now a slightly weakened squad for a cup game Scuffet there in goal with Palmer Brown at right back and Cresswell also coming into the side at left back Alan Traore also returning to the bench he would come on a little bit later on but Moncur and Scherner as the centre mids Ravel Morrison as an attacking mid and Bono up front and Jarvis and Downing as the wingers but Scherner is going to pick the ball up from Moncur he skips past one challenge unleashes a strike and what a goal that is in just the fifth minute Lasse Scherner with an absolutely brilliant goal to give us the lead. He goes past the challenge and that is a brilliant strike right into the bottom corner. Oh, Lasse Scherner, that is fantastic. His performances are getting better and better, but now Reading going forward into the 18th minute. It's Williams who's going to put the ball into Simon Cox. It's a great header and Reading equalise pretty damn soon after we take the lead. Only 15 minutes later, Simon Cox equalises for Reading, but now George Monker is going to find Matt Jarvis moving into the 24th minute. It's a good save there from Adam Federici in the Reading goal. Jarvis coming forward again. He's going to try and outpace Michael Hector. He cuts inside, goes for the strike, and it's a good but comfortable save in the end again for Federici. Now Lasse Scherner on the ball. He's going to try and find Downing. He strikes there from outside of the box, but again, Federici there, this time with a one-handed save, and uh, Cresswell giving the ball away in a very dangerous position. Cox there goes past Winston Reed, but it's a good save in the end from Scuffet. Now Morrison coming forward on the edge of halftime. He's given it to Embolo. He cuts back he finds Monker in the centre and Monker scores for his first ever West Ham goal George Monker has finally done it it wasn't a long shot like it was threatening to be but a brilliant team goal finished off by the youngster George Monker to give us the lead right on the edge of half time a very vital goal Lasse Schoenner giving it to Jarvis fantastic one touch football Ings gives it to Embola, but it's a good save from Federici what a team goal that would have been but now Ravel Morrison's coming off and the main man Alan Traore back from injury is coming on now Embolo trying to work some space he's gone past Williams there, he's going to unleash a strike on his left foot and he hits the bar, what a goal that would have been, now Traore giving it to Embolo a few minutes later, Ings finding Monker, lovely first time ball over the top for Jarvis, he's going to try and cut back in but it's a good save again from Federici and yet another team goal, another great team goal that would have been but it does end 2-1, we probably deserved to take a, a slightly wider margin of victory in the end but Reading did put up a big fight in the first half, it sort of tailed off in the second half though Great ratings though for George Monker. He was man of the match. Good rating as well for Brill Donald Embola and of course Lasse Schoener after that brilliant goal to give us a 1-0 lead. But now moving back to transfer activity and Ener Valencia yet again offers coming in for him. This time from Schalke a £4.6 million offer. We're going to put a counter offer on that. You may remember from last episode I asked you guys whether I should try and cash in. I think a lot of you have gone for yes. So we're going to go for sort of £10 to £12 million offers. But it doesn't seem as if teams are willing to pay that much despite him being worth that much. In real life, teams just aren't willing to pay more than sort of five, six million for him. And I'm not really willing to let him go for five or six million because I don't see what striker we could bring in who's better for that same amount of money. So we're going to try and at least get sort of eight or nine million pounds, I think. 
just to freshen things up, just so we can make some bids for more players. Now, which something that may help with making bids for new players is off is sort of asking for some more funds or maybe some more money from the board. Now, this is kind of cheeky. They asked us to get to the round of 16 in the cup. We've already reached the semi-final. So we're just going to slap that on there for £3 million. See if we get the £3 million from the board for something we've already actually managed to do. It might be a little bit cheeky, but we'll have to see how much extra money we get out of that. But now it is time to move into the semi-final of the Capital One Cup. The first leg against Liverpool. And we are at home, so we need to try and at least get a draw at the bare minimum but we're looking to try and win this really if we want to get to the final so that we have something to sort of look after and hold on to when we move into the second leg at Anfield. Here's the side we're rolling with in this game. Vinaldum as an attacking mid, Ayu and Scherner as wingers, Kroate and Dalf as uh, defensive mids, and Valencia up front. But Liverpool get the first chance of the game in a very cagey first half. Balotelli attempting a uh, very acrobatic effort, and Barini ends up with the header, but it goes far wider. Scuffe's post. Now moving into the 26th minute, Mario Balotelli there giving and going there with Alberto Moreno. Nice little one-two, but a good save using the body there from Simone Scuffe. Now a few minutes later, Valencia set through here by Vinaldum. He's going to try and take the shot, and it's a great save there with the outstretched arm by Simon Mignolet. And we're starting to come back into this game. It was a very, very cagey first half, as I said, but Valencia cutting past Martin Skirtle. He's going to cut it back now for uh, Coyate, who finds Delph and his left foot to strike. Uh, drifts harmlessly high and wide, though, of Mignolet's goal. But now Vinaldum twisting and turning, and Alicia's a strike, and he forces a save from Mignolet onto the post there. And uh, Mignolet doing a very good job of, uh, of dealing with that, but Liverpool almost taking the lead. Are oh, they? No. Thankfully, Dries Mertens finished there offside after some brilliant team play from Liverpool. But now we go forward again. Valencia trying to work some space for Cecho Coyate to run into. He's done that. Will he score? No, it's a good save yet again from Mignolet. Perhaps Coyate, not the man you'd want on that. Now Jarvis there finding Valencia first time in the box. Brilliant first touch, and he finds the, finds the far corner. Such a casual goal there from Ené Valencia. Jarvis finds him. He stops the ball, uses Skirtle's momentum, and then curls it round his body into that far corner. Mignolet doesn't even move, but now we've got to hold on. It's backs against the wall time. Sterling there with the strike, but a good uh, block there from Uchida. Now Henderson found on a good save from Scuffe there from the long shot. But we do, in fact, hold on to win the game 1-0 after Valencia's goal nine minutes from time. It was a very late goal, forgot to mention that. And with that, he takes man of the match quite deservedly, but everyone on the pitch, great performance. As you can see from the ratings, some great ratings pretty much across the park. Willem, Zuchida, Coyate, Delph, all doing well, and Valencia, of course, getting man of the match. It was a really good performance. I was very happy with it. For the first time in quite a few games, I was really, really happy with the performance. We did well against Reading, but it could have been better. That one was like the best performance we've had in recent times. Now, just sending another counter off about to Atletico Bilbao about Ener Valencia and receiving yet another ridiculously, pathetically low bid from Napoli of £4.7 million pounds for Ener Valencia. Now, the chief exec reckons we can get sort of seven odd million, sort of 7.4 million as a maximum. So I reckon we could probably quite easily get eight or nine million out of that. Now, in the background, you'll have seen what the board are willing to offer me uh, in, for getting to the stage that we're at in the cup. It was 1.9 million. I did actually go ahead and accept that. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But now, instead of talking about players we might be selling, let's actually, let's let's be positive. Let's have a look at some players we're going to try and buy. Now, by no means is this going to be a stellar blockbuster deal of the window, but it might be helpful in terms of depth for later on in the season. All the players in the background you can see, I offered the clubs nothing plus Mark Noble. So we'll see what they get back to, uh, what the clubs say about that. De Guzman, Kuzmanovic, Adrian Silva, Roman Eremenko and Clement Grony are the players in question. Now, Grony and De Guzman, both of those, their contracts are expiring this summer, so potentially we could actually work with that, and Kuzmanovic possibly as well. In the background is the amount of money you can now see, given that we've now accepted uh, the the um, the transfer budget um, or the increased transfer budget from the board of 1.9 million. Now, it's not quite as much as I was hoping for, but still, it's going to help us in the future. Now, in the background, you can see I've edited the for sale list. Now, bear with me, because you'll see Ayu and Jarvis have been Added to the low, uh, been added to the transfer list. Sorry. Now this isn't exactly that I want to sell them completely, but I'm just willing to hear offers for other clubs. But you'll see my logic now because Andre Ayew has played 22 games and has contributed three goals and zero assists. When you look at the other senior wingers, Scherner with six goals and two assists, Jarvis with one goal and five assists, and then you'll see Stuart Downing in seven games less than Ayew has got three goals and two assists. Therefore, Ayew hasn't really contributed enough, and given that he's worth ten and a half million. We could actually get sort of 15 or maybe even as well, at least 12 to 15 million 
for him that we can then put into another winger. If we sell Matt Jarvis, we could get another sort of pacey off the bench late on winger. You, you know the type I'm on about, the one with like 94 sprint speed to come on late in the game to change things with his pace. So if we can we can we can actually sell Ayu and Jarvis. Jarvis who's contributed a bit, but Ayu who's contributed nothing. And given that we bought him for nothing, we've lost nothing because we bought we bought him for nothing, but we could sell him for sort of 12 or 13 million and he hasn't contributed anything. And then we could go out and get a better sort of 82, maybe 83 stat winger for the same price. So that's my thinking behind that. I'm more listening to offers than anything else. So what I want you guys to do, a very late question of the day, very late on in the day, in fact. Um, is leave your suggestions for wingers. I've seen your suggestions for strikers, and I'm going to get try and get that done if we do end up selling in Air Valencia. But now I want you guys to leave your suggestions for wingers in the comments section, sort of up to and around about 12 to 15 million, and also a very pacing, pacey winger as well, so I can replace Ayu and Jarvis if they both do get sold. So it's shaping up as though next episode will be very entertaining as far as transfers have, have sort of gone. I know this transfer window hasn't been amazing so far. It's been more about trying to sell a player than trying to buy ones, but because we didn't have too much money, blah, 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 etc, etc. But with this sort of shake around that I'm hoping to achieve now, we might be able to, uh, to bring in some new players. So that leaves me with enough time to say thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Career Mode. Feel free to leave a like if you did. 50 likes yet again would be absolutely awesome, so smash the like button. Subscribe if you're new around here as well, and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much, as well as your suggestions for wingers to buy next episode. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.